I am the Chronicler. I shall record your adventures in my book of legends. Tell me of your deeds. Cautiously step inside, ready for any kind of trick or trap. But what you see makes you forget your trepidation. Before you is an underground railway platform with a dark tunnel leading off in either direction. This, however, is not what stops you in your tracks. The car currently parked on the platform, not 20 meters away, is carrying a strange and hulking piece of artillery. Yes, there can be no doubt. This is the famed railgun, the exact same device you studied back at Adam HQ. The legendary railgun is secretly anchored by steel cables to a specially designed car of an underground train. Hopefully it's still in working order. You're guessing it must be, given that the other tech you stumbled on in the bunker is more or less operational. As you're pondering the matter, the clatter of footsteps makes you spin about. Who's there? Soldiers clad in special armor enter the underground station. One of them doffs his helmet, Minister Veronin himself. It seems he's the leader of this detachment. His people take up strategic positions as you wait, studying their every movement. Astonishing, the old man whispers, bewitched by what he's seeing. You're already a work out to attack on the city. The Minister of Defense turns as if noticing your presence for the first time. Not yet. I was informed that you had successfully accessed the bunker, so I decided to break from the Battle of True Grad for just a few minutes. He scans the chamber again. Truly an amazing installation, built to last for centuries. No doubt you come here to help me. No, not really. Veronin exchanges a quick glance with his subordinates and assumes a creepily benevolent tone. A question, if I may. What do you need this huge cannon for? It has something to do with the theoretical menace posed by the Hesperus Star, correct? Yes, except the Hesperus is a nice star, but in our story, it's a direct intersect with Earth. So I've heard. And where did you get this information about the Hesperus Star? Veronin lowers his gaze and grimly adds, I'm not saying it's impossible, but the probability of the space rock colliding with a planet is vanishingly small. Yes, we know this already from your radio communications. It's just... He pauses to search for the right words. The railgun is a dangerous weapon, yet you somehow managed to get to it, even in this nigh-impenetrable bunker. You really think no warlord out there could steal it back from Adam? Plus, Veronin hesitates again before continuing in a steely voice. How can you be so sure that some corrupt member of your organization won't use the railgun for his own selfish goals? Well, that's always a risk no matter how taken. Let's get one thing clear. You're not going to hand me this invention or me, are you? No. First of all, what makes you so sure that the danger to Earth is even real? Second, how do you know the railgun can counter it? And last, what if some third party steals the weapon from Adam and turns it against mankind? Veronin squints at you suspiciously. I once believed that giving the device to Adam was the best option, but ever since the assault on Trudegrad, 
I've begun to have my doubts. Can you imagine what would happen if Sioma Veronok got his grubby paws on such a gadget? And Sioma isn't even the worst thing out there. Forgive me, but there is too much at stake to rely on your promises. The only way to guarantee humanity's survival is to destroy this thing. Please, step aside. Otherwise, I'll be forced to. With a practiced motion, Minister Veronin dons the huge helmet. It fixes to his armor with a soft hydraulic hiss. The last thing you see of the man's face before the steel shell obscures it completely is clear-eyed determination. The will to fight to the bitter end. You know that in the beginning, you know we'd never use it for evil, that's what it's right? With a hoarse sigh, Veronin shakes his head. Your words have touched him, even if he hasn't changed his mind. I confess, the Adam I used to know seemed to be in a very capable hand. But that was decades ago. In the world we lost thanks to weapons with less destructive potential than this magnetic cannon. How can I know the Adam of today is equally righteous? Into your heart, Brandon, and you know it to be true, the world can be your kind of So you still get it, I'm trying to talk to you out as much as I do know dearly like you, the last thing I'm going to be able to do all matter. The very fact of us meeting this place is proof that our mission has not changed. We're still alone to our military oath and the oath here to yourself once more to follow General. Veronin sighs heavily. You've awakened something of the old soldier in this Trudegradian bureaucrat, even if only for one elusive moment. However much I wish to deny it, I really do know Adam has not changed its ways. I can see it in your eyes. But, icy determination returns to the man's voice. How can I know that you'll keep this device away from scum like those raging through the city right now? The drop is back under control. You can escort us to the central base yourself to ensure we are well protected. We'll personally arrange it. A ringing silence descends upon the bunker. Veronin seems to be searching for something in you that would allow him and his fighters to carry out his original plan. All he desires is a single, tiny clue any reason at all to doubt you, but he finds none. We shall see, the old soldier finally replies and turns his back to you. His fighters all lower their weapons and the clicking of multiple safety mechanisms turning on signals an end to the confrontation. Only when he's standing beneath the steel arch leading back to the inverter facility does Veronin glance back. I will be expecting you, he says dryly and throws you a crisp salute. Veronin's fighters follow his example. General. All right, well, that was close. After receiving the railgun coordinates, a special atom unit was immediately dispatched to Trudograd, where they secured safe transportation of the device through an underground tunnel network. When the agents reached the city, this is what they found. The revolutionary movement was victorious in a battle that raged across every sector of Trudograd. After fending off the northern menace, they quickly formed a new government made up of committee members and busied themselves introducing social, economical and political reforms. Their goal was the creation of a strong, expansive and internationally active Trudograd. Under the new regime, the city grew and flourished, while the newly empowered proletariat hunted down and eliminated every remnant of the previous government, expunging the old order for good. Seventh Heaven, Trudograd's grandiose folly, was thoroughly purged during the first days of the revolution. Along with all their precious possessions, the fat cat's lives were for feet. Their properties were occupied by rebel leaders. Their belongings divided amongst the citizenry, and the district was open to all citizens. This state of affairs only lasted a few years, however at which point the new authorities began slowly separating themselves from the common man to decide the fate of the proletariat from on high, without any annoying interference. The true Gradian division of Guangzhou Merchants Group survived the unrest without serious losses. More importantly, the profits they earned during the political struggle would become the stuff of legend. Widespread word of Guangzhou's business savvy 
would soon attract even more trade to the city. With the shackles of classism struck from the hands and feet of the people, Comrade Blaze struggled with the hardest decision of her life. In the end, her heart's desire to continue fighting at your side finally succumbed to her sense of duty. After saying her goodbyes, Blaze dedicated herself to a new purpose, the education, empowerment and mentorship of the free working class. Three years later, the Revolutionary Committee sent her on an important diplomatic mission beyond the walls of Trudograd. She never returned from the eastern steppes, and her fate remains unknown. When the situation in Trudograd had come somewhat, your self-declared father insisted on remaining in the city to immortalize your recent adventures in a grand novel to be titled Comrade Railgun. While you never actually read the book, you later heard it acclaimed as the most beloved piece of literature ever written within Trudograd's walls, which unfortunately did not save Hexogen from being condemned to a life sentence a few months later. His follow-up essay urging Aton to level Trudograd so that humanity may return to a natural woodland habitat was not popular with the authorities. <laughs> the elderly writer is now reputed to reside in a warm, comfy cell. His fellow political prisoners hail him as their spiritual leader <laughs> and impatiently await his magnum opus, sadistically <laughs> sentenced but not sodomized. <laughs> as for you, after things had come somewhat in the city above, you rendezvous with your fellow Aton members and led them to the railgun. Now, while watching the delegation scientists prepare the weapon for transport, you cannot help but ponder the question that never seems to leave your mind. Can this rusty old cannon truly be humanity's last hope? Or was the adventure which touched so many lives in Trudograd just pointless busy work? It seems your quandary must go unanswered, at least for the time being. The freight train is fueled and ready to go, but there are still some checks to be passed before the convoy rolls off into the underground network. With nothing to do but wait for deployment, you decide to spend your last moments warming yourself at a burning barrel. A man is waiting there when you arrive. Short, hunchbacked and raggedy, he enters at the bunker alongside the Aton operatives and is now warming his bones by the fire. His face is completely concealed in the depths of a voluminous cowl, yet somehow you know he is smiling. Something else.